Hello, my name is Alex Brancazio, and today I'm going to be putting together a seven-part video series for the Ken McMillan School District on beginning golf. This video is to teach the students about golf, um, some, of the, some of the beginning aspects about the game, um, as well as help some of our educators in the school district um, to teach this content to their students. The first part of this video is going to talk about the clubs and what is in a true golf bag. Uh, the clubs, you're allowed to play with 14 clubs. You can play with less clubs, if you don't quite have 14, it's okay, but you are not allowed to go over the amount of 14 clubs. Okay? Um, currently, in my bag, I have 15. I have two putters in my bag, so if I played a technical round, I would ditch one of the putters. So, right now, there's two different types of putters that people like to play with. One is a mallet shaped putter, has a bigger bottom end. I like it because it has a more straight back and straight through kind of a feel for me. The other type is a blade putter, okay? Smaller, not as wide, and it's more for an arc shape, okay? More for arcing your putter. Now let's talk about wedges, okay? Moving up from your putters, you have what are known as wedges. This is to place the ball on the green and make sure that it stays there. It's important to practice with each different wedge so that you can hit different kinds of shots, hit different distances, and have different trajectories. Let's talk about what your wedge game will do for you. So, right now, I picked up my four wedges. Okay, I'm gonna come a little bit closer so you can see them. Okay, on my wedges, these two came with the set of clubs, the irons that I bought these two did not. You can switch wedges in, switch wedges out, just make sure that they are gapped appropriately and so that they will fit in your bag. This is a pitching wedge. This is a 50 degree gap wedge. This is a 56 degree sand wedge. And this is a 60 degree lob wedge. As we start over on this side where the pitching wedge is, this, like I said, to change trajectory, to change distance, to change different shot type, um, you're gonna wanna use a different wedge. This is more designed, if I'm close to the green, I can use a chip and run out of, off of it. This also allows me to hit the ball a little bit further than this. Also, as we kind of move down, different trajectories, different distances, the more I get over to my lob wedge, the more I am able to arc the ball, hit a high shot that kind of sticks and lands where I want it to. Like I, and this one over here is more of a put on the green and let that ball roll. Moving down through my list, now I've made it to my irons. Irons are what you are going to use while you are trying to still get the ball onto the green. So you're gonna take an approach shot with it. You may take a full swing, uh, but irons are designed to still get the ball closer to the hole, eventually land it on the green. When you get really good, your approach shot will land on the green with your irons, um, but, and your misses, you can, use your wedges for, but here are my irons in my bag. So I have my nine, my eight, seven, six, five, and four. I stop at four. Some people play with a three iron. S some people can even go down to a two iron, but I stop at four. Um, my irons, if you can look, okay, and if you haven't noticed yet, as I go down this bag, okay, the lower the number on this club, so let me pick up a club for you. I'm gonna pick up my nine iron, I'm going to pick up my four iron. As you can see, okay, as these clubs go down the wall, they're going to get bigger, taller, okay, as the number gets smaller. So this is actually my nine iron, this is my four iron, and if I put them side by side, this one is significantly longer. This one is going to allow me to add distance to my ball. This one will still allow me to hit a ball pretty good, but this is gonna give me more distance. Um, also, what has also changed again is the trajectories. This one is gonna have a more of a lower flight. This one will be able to get up into the air a little bit more. As you cruise down, okay, a couple things are gonna change. Your ball position and things like that are going to change. Um, but for right now, we're just worried about the clubs. All right, now we have a little bit of a special club to tell you about. Okay. This happens to be 
my favorite club in the bag. Number one reason, I got it for a birthday present. Number two, it is a Cobra hybrid. Um, my favorite player is Ricky Fowler, and he uses Cobras, okay? Um, pretty much why I really, really like this club is that it is a Cobra. A hybrid, however, is a ball that is designed to make it a little bit easier from a distance to get it onto into the air and let it fly um, down the course a little bit. So, if you use a hybrid, you may struggle a little bit with your long irons. So your four, your five, you might have some trouble with it, okay? Uh, this is at 19.5, okay, uh, degrees for my loft. So it allows me to, in the fairway, it still allows me to you know, take a nice clean shot at the ball, but also in the rough, it's gonna help you out because of the um, shape of the club, the big head on it, um, it'll allow to go down into the grass and really dig that ball out and put it in and the And the last ones I have in my bag are known as the woods, okay? I have a three wood, okay? As you can see, that is not a wood, okay? It is not wood, um, but it is called a three wood because the head is a little bit bigger. Um, you can use these off the fairway, so it takes a little bit more skill. Um, you can use them off the rough, it takes a lot more skill, but if your ball is a little bit lofted in the rough, it can possibly be easier, but this is to add a little bit more distance. Notice the shape, it has a bigger back, okay? And it is even longer than my irons. So as we grow, go up, this is even gonna be even longer than the irons. This right here, this loft right here is gonna be 15 degrees, designed for distance. This is your recipe for distance, okay? Starting to hit those far, far away shots um, off the tee, off the, um, maybe on a par five, your second shot. And then finally, we have the driver, okay? Driver is first one off the tee, um, unless it's a par three or a short par four, or if you're trying to avoid some kind of danger on the course, you might not use a driver. But if you're on a par five, if you're on a long par four, driver is usually your go-to option. Most people are trying to hit driver um, off the tee, uh, and what that, and I'll explain what a tee is after this. But as you can see, a very, very large head on this, okay? It is the longest club in your bag. It, you will have um, a, you will be furthest away when you approach the ball and try to hit the ball with this club. This is right now is at 10.5 degrees of loft, okay? Um, so very, very challenging to hit if you're a new golfer, but stick with it, give it time, and you'll be great. Okay, guys, also I wanted to talk to you. I'm sorry about the change of scenery. We just got kicked out of the gym for uh, track practice. But I wanted to talk to you also about some of the things you may not think of your first time playing golf. Maybe a new golfer you might have some butterflies in your stomach. So we want to give you um, an idea of some things to put in your bag and just keep there uh, for your first round of golf. Um, as we go, you are going to want a towel, okay? Um, as you play, you might, even if it's a dry day, things are gonna get in the grooves of your clubs, okay? And those little lines on the club face, and you're gonna want to at least dry them off to clean those grooves out. If there is dirt, if there's grime, if there's wet, that is gonna, uh, rain, that's gonna be between the ball. Uh, you don't want any kind of, you know, other materials between your club face and the ball when it's contracted. So a towel, just to dry your club off, clean it off, is not a bad idea. A lot of golf courses will have a ball washer and a towel next to as you tee off, um, but it's a good idea to bring your own just for your own clubs um, things like that. Also, what you're gonna want is a brush, okay? To, like I said, brush those grooves out. Um, so a brush is always a good idea. Clean your grooves out. It does allow you to play a little bit better. Allow, you know, for especially a little more experienced player, um, we'll start really liking your brush because you're gonna wanna clean it out. You're gonna have more control of your ball to clean those grooves out, so a nice brush. Another thing you may not think of is a glove, okay? Uh, a glove, I'm a right-handed golfer, so I wear a glove on my left hand. If you are a left-handed golfer, you will wear a glove on your right
right hand. Now, it is allowed, you can, okay, if you prefer to wear a glove on both hands. Um, you, if you get blisters um, on either hand, sure, wear a glove on both hands. But a glove will, you know, really cut down. There is a lot of friction as you start to swing, especially if you are a beginning golfer. Your hands may not be used to the grips on your clubs. Glove is always a good idea. Something else that you may need is tees. Okay, as you approach the, you know, your first hole, you don't want to be the person who's, oh my gosh, I don't have any tees and need to borrow some. So little tees um, to tee your golf ball up. It does give you an advantage off the tee because you can tee it how high you want it. Um, when you gain more skill, you'll be able to use these and set these to appropriate heights. Um, especially with your driver, it's, you're not going to be very successful if you don't have tees and you're trying to tee off, you know, off the, off the tee. Um, off the tee box, it's just not going to happen. So you want some tees in your bag. And so grab some tea. This one really should have been number one. You also want golf balls. Don't go play golf without any golf balls. Um, you know you're you're going to want for your first time a nice little cheap brand. Um, you know buy buy a little box. I want a twelve. Um, especially if it's your first time, you might pluck them into the woods, there might be water, you might just not be able to track that ball. And you're going to want, you know, at least a, a box, I would say, grab a 12 pack of just the cheapest golf balls you can find and be ready to play golf balls. A couple other little things that you might want is a little divot tool. As you play, if you, you know, you hit a nice shot, it lands on the green, it may cause a little damage into that green, it may create a little crater, and it is appropriate uh, that you kind of fix, if you have, if you kind of cause any damage to the course, that you fix the damage that you have caused. So, a little tool like this, um, all you do is dig around it, push the soil back, and then flatten it out with like a putter head or your hand, and it should be good. Also, what you want is a little circular kind of object, okay, quarters work. This is actually is a true ball marker. Um, it came with the divot tool. But this is a true ball marker. You are allowed on the green to mark where your ball is. All right, set this behind your golf ball, and you are allowed to um, leave this in place of your golf ball, so then you are allowed to pick your golf ball up, clean it off, uh, use a towel if you want it, and then replace your golf ball, and then remove your little um, your marker. So, not a bad tool to have. Like I said, a coin or quarter usually works pretty well, um, but some, just something flat and small um, so that you can uh, put it on the green and leave it there. Some people do use tea pegs. Um, the only problem with that is if someone is actually behind your ball, you are allowed to mark it. They uh, should hit first, and a tee peg will kind of be a little rough to kind of maneuver around if your ball is in their path to the hole. So I like little ball markings like that. The last couple of things that you may need, number one, is just athletic tape. I like to keep in my bag just because my right hand will sometimes, especially if I haven't hit my clubs for a while, will get a couple of blisters. Um, instead of going out and gra grabbing like a whole glove or something like that, just tape with where the blister is kind of starting to form and it prevents the damage from continuing to occur. So nice little roll of tape. Last thing that you want is a jacket. Okay, this is going to, you know, you, it looks like there's beautiful weather out and then all of a sudden as you start playing it's going to start raining okay leave this in there you may never use it but the day may come where you'll be thankful if you do have it and it's you know it's really coming down out there it won't affect you too much you can keep playing you can stay dry um, just a good thing to have in your bag and and that's it guys that's part one of our seven part video um, Hopefully this has encouraged you to at least uh, think about playing golf a little bit more. And we will be back to you with uh, part number two later. All right guys, so we're here actually playing today. It's a nice day outside. Um, when you go to a golf course, you most of the time pick up a little scorecard and it'll have a couple of the rules that the course likes you to follow. Um, today we're going to be playing where there's no dress code. You can pretty much wear whatever you like. This is called a par three golf course. So it's a 
um, low maintenance, low rule kind of course. It's great for beginners if you're interested. Um, I'm gonna play around today, keep my score, show you how that works, um, and we'll catch you later. Thanks. So we're starting off on the tee off box, okay? Tee off box, if you look, there's a yellow and a black. On different kind of tee off boxes, you're going to have um, different colors. Make sure you match up for which color you are. Beginners, women's tees, um, advanced, okay? Just to start you off at a different distance. Um, first thing on a tee off box, all right, if you are not hitting, make sure that you're standing off while someone's swinging. Um, also, you are allowed to use a tee. When you are done hitting your ball, your tee might break, that's okay. There should be little garbages around. Make sure that you throw your tee away or at least put it in your pocket and throw it away later, okay? Um, we're gonna hit one and then we'll catch up with you. Thanks. All right guys, quick little lesson. There's the green right there. Our drives ended a little bit short. Um, the person who is furthest away is first going to hit the ball. So this ball is a little bit further away. This one is a little bit closer, so this person hits first to the green, okay? And you keep continuing to play like that until you're on the green and into the hole. All right, guys, one of the big rules is no golf carts on the green. So whenever you're driving a golf cart, we see the greens right here. You're not allowed to drive onto the green. So make sure your cart never goes on the green, as well as your bag. Do not place your bag on the green either. Thanks. All right, guys, so... Here we have a little situation of sometimes what can happen. Um, this is called a divot. If your ball hits the green, we are on the green, you're gonna wanna replace your divot. So what you do is get your divot tool out. You're going to dig that ground up a little bit, just like that. And you're going to, what I like to do with my putter, just kinda make sure that it's flat and then it's smooth again. Kinda fixes the divot that you created. Golf etiquette, always important. All right guys, so now, um, we are on the green. Um, this ball is pretty close to the hole, and we have a ball that is over here. It's a little bit further away from the hole. All right, the person who is <laughs> the person who is going to be a little bit further away uh, gets to hit first. One thing you don't want to do is walk. This one's mine, so I'm going to just kind of walk in front of it. You don't want to step in front of somebody's path like this, okay? Blocking their path to the ball. Um, it's just kind of disrespectful, and it could mess up the ground that the ball kind of rolls on. Also, what you are allowed to do, you are allowed to bring a point, okay, to the, uh, to the green, set it behind your ball, take your ball up, brush it off, get all the dirt, dirt off of it so it gives you a better roll, and then leave your coin while other people are putting, and then you are allowed to replace your ball. Don't try to give yourself an advantage while this. Some people do get in trouble while they do this, and then pick that coin. So on this one, we're actually on hole three now. Um, this one has a little bit of water that you have to contend with. If you hit a ball in the water, okay, you have a couple options. Number one, you do lose a stroke for it. So you lose a stroke and then you're actually hitting three if that's the case. All right, so that's if the ball goes in the water. You can hit from the tee box again, or there is a landing, okay, you could, there's a drop zone. You can take your ball, put it in the drop zone, and then hit from there if you prefer. You can hit from either spot. Um, you could also hit uh, where your ball lands in that water. Right now, drop. we have a ball here that is close to the right. So that's able to be played. Green's right there. All right, if that ball was on the grate or resting, you don't want to mess your club up. It just established rules before, okay? So you could take, an, if it's an unplayable lie, you have a couple options. Um, just make sure you establish rules before you play. Um, if it is an unplayable lie, um, find out what those options are and you can play off of that. Um, one is going to be take a reshot, just walk back up to the tee and take a reshot. Or um, if it was an unplayable lie, um, you can give yourself a club length and then take a drop from that position. Now let's talk about grip. Grip is important because this is your connection with the club. Um, if you look down the line at the PGA guys, it, it's different from top to bottom on the way they hold the club and the way their hands are placed on the club. So you need to find one where you can find some consistency. Um, the grip should also promote the type of ball flight that you have. Um, but for a beginner, we just want you to be able to, you know, use the club so that the ball th goes where you would like it to, um, have a little bit more success whenever you participate. So when thinking about grip, 
I'm going to trying to find my own. I'm going to hold the club with my trail hand. I am right-handed, so my trail hand is going to be my right hand. My lead hand will be my left hand. And at the part where you have the rubber, that is called your grip. This is the shaft. This is the club head. So I'm going to try to put this through my hand. I'll move up so you can see. All right through my lifeline of my hand. Okay, I don't want it nestled down in my palm. It's going to be very hard to play consistent like that. So what I want is right through the lifeline right there. Okay, and I want to lock on. Okay, you should be able to hold it with your pad and your pointer finger. Okay, and whenever I'm done, I should be able to close and then place my other hand on. The next step is that I want to put my palm together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the club down. Okay, I'm going to rest it just like this. As I go to grab the club, I want to try to get as close to a neutral grip as I can. I do this by bringing my hands together and still placing my lead hand, which is my left arm, on that club first and then making it even behind. So I have a nice grip, neutral grip down the club. Whenever you are done, it is a nice idea to have the arrows, um, the V's in your hands kind of reach my right shoulder. So this is my right shoulder. Try to reach my right shoulder. They should be pointing towards my right shoulder whenever my arms are down. And as I swing, it will be an easier time to grip the club, have consistency, and promote a good ball flight. Let's talk about the different kind of grips that we kind of see out there, okay? This would be a, what you would call a very neutral grip, okay? In a neutral part of the grip, um, both of these are coming up towards the right shoulder, and that promotes a good ball flight. It's easy to stay consistent, turn the club through on your follow through. Um, if you turn your hands over, like, this, this is more of a weaker grip. It's going to close your club face. So sometimes if you're not careful, it can promote a hook um, where your ball can kind of go left of path if you are a right-handed golfer. So that is a weak club face. Also, we have a strong, okay, where your face will remain open. And this kind of can promote a slice if you are not careful. So what we want to set you up as is just get as close to even as possible. Like we said, grip first with the finger and the lifeline. Close that on. And we are going to place. And then as we go down, make sure the trail hand, which is my right, is just being on the club and closing over top. Both V's want to point to my right shoulder, okay? And that is a strong grip. Some people do play with the underside of the grip. So where my fingers are, I use an interlock grip. Um, so where my pointer finger of my lead hand and my pinky finger of my trail hand kind of overlap and cross each other like this. Um, you can use a baseball grip, which is like this. Okay, ten it's also called 10 fingers because all 10 fingers are on the club. And finally, you are able to use just an overlap where the pinky finger comes over top of the uh, pointer finger but does not cross each other. The pointer finger stays locked down and your pinky overlap, just kind of overlaps that. That is called an overlap grip. So now let's talk about stance. The first thing I want to mention is when a golfer takes a good stance is they have to be properly aligned. Um, they have to be aimed correctly. Um, this is going to allow you to see if you are hitting the ball straight. Right now I have set up a cone. This is the front cone is my intermediate target and then the further away cone is my actual target. I want to hit the ball to that. As I take a swing, make sure that I am properly aligned. I want to see that ball fly over the intermediate target and land close to my target. This will let me know if I'm at least properly aligned, if the ball flies over the target, and that it is a more of a path or a club face problem rather than an alignment problem. The way I got to this was I took one of my clubs out of my bag and I put it on this little, I only have a little hitting mat right here for our gym space right now, but I made a straight line, so I got down and 
I put a straight line where that was placed. So if I would put a ball out, which I don't have one out yet, but if I had to put one down, that's my target, that's where I want my target line to be. I want my target line to run where my target is. Whenever I align myself, whenever I try to line up, think of it like railroad tracks. You want to stand parallel to your target line. So I grab another club out of my bag and I want to place it down. And I'm, right now, it is not placed correctly because if so, it's just a little bit shy of parallel. If so, I'm actually a little bit open in this stance. So let's make sure that your feet will also be parallel to your target line. So as I have those clubs down, slight bend in knee, from this position, you can play some pretty good golf. Let's talk about your body posture as you're lining up. Whenever you line up to the ball, now we will do ball placement here in a minute, but we want to make sure that we are a little bit, okay, having our shoulders that are not so far, one's not real high, one's not real low. We want a nice even kind of stance. We want a slight bend in the knee, okay, only slight. We don't want to be squatted down. A lot of athletes think this is the proper stance because this is where power is generated from. This is more of a rotational, okay, um, athletic move. So a lot of power is going to come from the hips and the rotation, abdomen, um, not so much, you know, a burst. We, we want a little bit of a, you know, a leg kick, but we don't want to burst out of a stance like in basketball if you're powering up for, you know, a dunk or in football if you're coming up to block somebody. So we just want a slight knee bend. And then we want our arms just to kind of hold the club, okay? Nice and easy. Um, depending on which club, it's going to depend because some are going to be a little bit further out, some are going to be a little bit closer. Right now, in my hand, I have a nine iron. So with this, it's not a long iron. So it's, it's a short iron, which means it's going to be a little bit closer to my body. I want a slight bend. I don't want to be bent over, okay? I don't want to be bent over this ball hard to swing whenever and generate any kind of power if you are hunched over the ball. So what I want is just a nice little placement, slight bend in knee, let your arms hang down. And from this point, you should be able to rotate, contact the ball, and have a nice follow through. The last part I wanted to talk about was where to play the ball in your stance. For a full swing shot, nothing fancy. Start with the ball in the middle of your stance. So make sure that you're still keeping all the same posture about yourself. Let your legs, okay, slight bend in them. No hunching, nice, okay, nice high back. Um, nice grip on the club still. And play that ball in the middle of your stance. Um, the reason being because as we play this ball in the middle of the stance, um, we want to contact the ball first and those grooves will allow that ball to spin um, and it will um, then contact the ground after. So you really, you wanna be coming down. It's a descending blow into this ball. Um, let the club do the work for you, okay? Don't try to scoop underneath or anything like that. Um, ball comes down, or sorry, club comes down, strikes the ball, ball flies out, then you contact the ground and then keep following through. Play the ball in the middle of the stands will make for better outcomes. Okay guys, now you've made it to the part of the video where this is gonna be the full swing. Okay, so some fun stuff coming up here. Um, after, remember, as you take your full string swing, make sure that your grip and your stance is still aligned. You still wanna be uh, lined up appropriately with your stance and make sure that your grip is something comfortable that you feel comfortable with, um, but it's also gonna be successful where you can create solid contact and promote good ball flight. For our full swing, now there's a couple elements that we want, okay? I'm not gonna talk about grip and I'm not gonna talk about stance because that's not in this one. So if you, if you need some, some of that, you know, go back to the previous uh, clip. So for our swing, okay, as I take 
my setup, after I'm done with my setup, okay, what we want to do is we want to promote a rotation um, kind of a swing. We don't want it to get very armsy. We don't want to have some type of big explosion. We want to uh, create a type of swing that is going to be a rotation, okay? Make the club go in a rotation kind of setting. So what I'm going to do, if I just let my hands kind of come out like this in my back swing, so I'm just kind of taking my hands away and I'm raising up like this, I'm not going to be very successful. My body wants to go with it. Remember, if I would have a bucket, okay, and I don't have one with me, but if I had a bucket, I'd be holding the bucket like this. And I do this drill, but um, I just couldn't find one today. They were all being used. So, bucket, if I'm going to swing this bucket without using uh, legs or hands, what I want to do is rotate with this bucket, okay? And when I finish, um, my follow through, my chest is pointing this way. As I come back, okay, you can see my chest is now following uh, back towards you guys. If I follow through, okay, now my chest is facing my target. There is a target down there, that little orange uh, barrel, and that's what I'm using for my target today. So, as I come back, I want to keep the same kind of motion uh, in play. So, as I bring this club back, I am bringing it back uh, with my body as well. So, club back, my body comes with it. As I get closer to the top, okay, so top of the backswing, this left arm wants to stay straight, okay, as straight as possible. You are going to kind of flex with your right arm. I'm right-handed, I'm going to flex with my right arm, my left hand uh, arm stays straight. So, at the top, starting again, so it just looks correct, start here, bring body back. At the top, left arm is straight, right hand is then flexed. As I come down through impact, I want to get those hands leading, okay? Hands leading the club head down and impacting the ball. It should be ball first, and then we hit the ground second. So ball first, compress, ball second. Now in my follow through, okay, as I'm using this follow through, make sure that those hands are coming down through the ball and that you are facing your target, okay? Uh, one thing that people do, they just wanna stop. So if I'm here, I'm hitting a ball, I, some people just wanna stop right here. And this is not a good follow through. You didn't contact it as hard as you could have. Remember, this is a full shot. We do want power. Um, you do want a little leg kick, getting your momentum forward, not some big jumping explosion. But as you're coming down through impact, some forward tilt, leading, and we want to follow through. What I always say for follow through is whenever I'm done, my finished position, go through the whole swing. All right, I should be able to uh, grab this club head right here. Club head, I should be able to see it. I should be able to grab it with my right hand when I'm done. So as I'm taking my swing back at the top, impact and contact, follow through, finish, I should be able to grab that club. Um, we're going to hit one for you and we're going to kind of show you the full swing. Okay. Um, there are assessments. All I'm doing right now, since it's beginning, I haven't hit a couple right now. I'm just kind of see how many balls out of 10 I could get close to that target. Um, my range for right now, I'm only using foam balls, um, number one. Now, uh, I have a seven iron. That barrel is probably 40 yards down there. I'm just gonna try to see how far I can get. Now remember, foam balls are not gonna fly like regular balls, okay? Um, but we do wanna show you the full swing in action. Here it is. Hello everybody, um, now it's time to talk about part five of our video. Part five is going to be our short game, um, our technique in the short game, um, and our thought process, our club selection, setup, um, and skill execution all in the short game. Today we're going to be talking about the pitch and the chip shot. Um, idea is pretty much both the same. We're trying to chip the ball up onto the green, uh, let it rest there as close to the hole as possible. Um, that's our goal. Um, so as close to the hole, me saying that means three, four, five feet away, obviously the closer, if you could get it within a foot, great. If you can get it within two, that's even, you know, that's good. Um, 
but we, we do want to get our first overall objectives, especially if you're a beginner, get it onto the green, let it stay onto the green as close as possible. Um, the difference between the pitch shot and the chip shot, okay, is a pitch shot is going to technically fly a little bit higher, um, so it's going to have a little bit more trajectory, and then whenever it hits, it's not going to have as much as a rollout. A chip shot, on the other hand, is going to kind of do the opposite. You're not going to hit it as high, you're not going to swing as hard, you're not going to hit it as far, but it's going to have a little bit more rollout to it. It's actually going to be a low um, club kind of coming in at it. Uh, you want it to just kind of get onto the green and roll its way there. Whereas a pitch shot, we want to fly it close to the hole, get it to stop, check up around the hole where the hole is. So a couple things I want to talk about first before we actually show you a shot and we show you the drill that we have set up for you. Um, a couple things I want to kind of talk to you about first is remembering back to the part uh, one of the video where we are selecting your clubs. Um, you want to select the right club to execute the shot if you're hitting a pitch shot um, and if you are hitting a chip shot. So if I am hitting a chip first, let's just say we're hitting a first, I pulled um, a couple clubs out of my bag. So I have an eight iron, a pitching wedge, and my sand wedge, my 56, this sand. What I wanna do for a chip shot, okay, let's say down here, okay, like I said, we have it set up already. That's about 30 yards to our target, to the hole, okay? We have a cone set up here in the gym. But um, I'm actually going to take my driver, I pulled my driver out of my bag, I'm gonna use this as a mark, just kind of lay it down to where I wanna hit it over, and from that point on, get it as close to this as I can, land it past it, okay? So it's gonna be this, facing this way, I wanna land the ball past it, and then get it to the hole, all right? Um, I'm gonna do this through a chip once, and then a pitch once, okay? So you can kind of see the process in place, okay? Um, so club selection becomes a big choice for us, all right? For a chip shot, where we're gonna actually play it at a lower trajectory, I'm thinking eight iron, okay? Um, depending on distance, depending on where you're at on the green, if the if it's the green's uphill or if it's downhill. I mean, a couple of different factors are gonna come into place, but usually you wanna gap a little, you know, have a club in the middle of each of these. Um, but for this shot, for the chip shot, I'm gonna use my eight, and then probably for the pitch shot where I want it to check up pretty quickly, I want to use my sand wedge. Okay, this is gonna give me more trajectory, a little bit less distance, and this is gonna give me a little bit more distance, but it's gonna give me a little bit less trajectory. Chip and run, uh, pitch, stop close to the hole, not so much run out on the ball. So when setting up for the chip shot, okay, there's a couple things that we wanna do. First off is you wanna place a ball, okay, on this. And remember, you're gonna be walking up towards your ball. So the ball's already in place. We were gonna set up to the ball. Right? And what we are going to do, I like to set my club down first and then set up to the ball. First off, we're going to keep our stance a little bit narrower. Okay? We don't want some wide stance because we want our lower body to be as quiet as possible. So we're actually going to narrow this stance up a bit. And I like to try to keep this ball along my right inside part of my right foot. So my right foot and on the inside part of that. So it's a little bit behind your midline. So this is my sternum, just a fraction, just half of a ball to a ball over on the backside, okay? Um, we don't wanna get too far away because then it, we can thin it and it could fly. Um, we might just not be consistent enough, All right? So this is a good spot to start. With our handle, we want it slightly forward. So I'm going to say, here's where I'm resting the ball. And I just wanna put it right on my left inside thigh. And I'm going to stand it up a little bit more vertically than I would and choke down, okay? So now I'm in a pretty good position. Um, the, the swing aspect of this, um, you know, as we kind of come through, my weight, okay, should be a little bit more towards my right side. I don't want to lean, I don't want to bend over, but I want a little bit more to my right side, all right? Just because as I come through, I'm making a good, uh, a, a good swing through. Uh, being able to scrape the ground and make solid contact with the ball. Whenever I'm done, my swing aspect of this, okay, this is what a chip should be. So you're bringing it back and then you are bringing it forward 
and my club head, the club head, is going to be a little bit lower than my hands. Okay, we don't want any kind of hinging with the wrist. We, we want as quiet as possible, um, almost like a putter stroke, okay, with your, with your chipping technique. So 60, 40, 60, 40, nice high, club face straight, um, ball placement on the inside right, and then club uh, on the inside left, nice back, and then your, here's your follow through finish position, which would look something like that. Okay, that is your setup, and that is your stroke mechanics for your chip shot. Right, I'm actually going to chip a ball, let you watch uh, where the trajectory is on this side of the screen. Um, for our drill, I'll show you that we've set up. I'll actually turn the camera, let you watch a ball kind of come off of the mat and roll towards the target. Remember, this is a chip and run shot. Nice setup, club face straight. Here, 60-40 with my weight, back and through. Our pitch shot is going to be just a little bit different. Um, we don't want to get too crazy with it. We don't want to take it like a full shot, but we do want to influence the ball to come higher in its trajectory um, so that it can hit the green um, and start checking up for us. Uh, you use this shot if you have some type of you know hazard in front of you. There's water, there's a sand trap. Um, uh, it, it's also a type of longer shot where you just got to carry um, the, the green. You have to carry that ball until it gets to the greens and you need some height to do that. So our setup for the pitch shot, our ball this time is going to be in the middle of our stance. Okay, We still want, don't want to be too loud with the bottom half of our body. So ball is in the middle of the stance. Okay, I'm still going to okay, set up to this ball, middle of the stance. My club now does not need to be so much forward reason being because we are trying to get height on this. Um, so my setup is now 50-50, take a couple practice swings out to the side, and as you notice, as I'm taking these practice swings, all right, I have a little bit of hinge now in my wrist, okay? Now my wrists want to get a little bit more creative, okay? Want to make a little bit more noise. So, and that's going to promote height, okay? The reason why is because it's going to promote height. So I want to get here, and then finish with that club head a little bit higher, okay? That is going to promote height. So 50-50, set up with your ball in the middle. I'm gonna take this club back, make a nice stroke. Okay, so now I have our drill set up that I talked about earlier. I set my driver about five yards off. Okay. My goal is to hit the ball um, over top of the driver, make sure it lands on the other side, and it wants to roll down towards the hole. Remember, this is a chip and run shot, not a lot of trajectory, just over the club, and let the kind of the ball on the ground do the work. Let it run over all the way to the green, um, to the hole. Um, you could do, if you are doing, if, the, if you are a teacher, um, you could assign any kind of point uh, system that you like. If you're a student, uh, you also can assign any kind of point system that you like. It's just something that you can follow. Um, I will attach a short game kind of idea plan for you to follow, like a little assessment, um, and you can check that out in the link below. Um, so I'm going to chip over top of this, run on down to there. For me, my assessment is how well I'm playing is if I miss. Um, I don't get that ball to stop in the key of the basketball hoop, uh, of the basketball court, then I get zero points, no points for that. Um, if it does stop into the blue, I am going to get uh, five points, and then if I actually hit the cone, I get 10 points. And that's just the point system that I thought of would be easiest, hence we have three kind of spots I could possibly land in, zero, five, and 10. Um, like I said, however many points, or you could use the assessment. Uh, this is, like I said, this is going to be a chip and run shot. We just want to see uh, how you can, you know, use the setup, use the swing, and see how well you are executing this actual shot. Okay, not bad. We ended up landing in the blue. Um, so I would actually get five points for it. Looks like it's about three or four feet from the hole. Um, 
if your putting game is good, three and four feet is not bad for your chipping game. Um, that, that is a makeable putt, and that's the goal of using your chip shot, using a chip and All right, guys, now it's time for the pitch shot, okay? Um, like we said, pitch is going to be a little bit different. It's going to go high, and it's, then it's going to check up, take one or two pops, um, and try to stop close to the hole, so we have to carry it a little bit farther. Um, the drill now kind of changed a little bit as well, because um, if I walk five yards out, I've actually moved my driver, okay? It is now at half court, so I'm going to actually go down here so you can see it. It's about right here, okay? So my goal in mind is to try to hit that ball, fly it over the driver so that it can land. Since we are in the gym, um, these balls are not going to check up as well as if you were playing Pro V1's the top name ball or anything like that. Um, and you're outside on a true green. Uh, and I knew that, and I know that going in. So I'm kind of just going to adjust my assessment just a little bit. You'll see how I do that. And then um, for the chip and run, it was also pretty challenging to get that ball to roll to where I wanted it. The speed is going to be a little bit off. But we encourage you to go out and try it. Um, you can go play at places where uh, you can just use the practice greens. And you can chip, you can putt, you can pitch. Um, and, it caught, and it's a little bit cheaper. Do whatever you need, need to do to work on your short game. This is where you are gonna save strokes, so it is important. Um, for a pitch, here's your drill. So we set that out a little bit more. I've changed my assessment. If I hit it over my driver, we're gonna give myself, give, I'm gonna give myself one point. One point for over top of the driver. If I get it onto the second half, okay, it went over top of the driver and it stays Okay, over on that second half of the gym, I'm gonna give myself another point. If it lands in the key still, if it's landing in the key, okay, um, I'm still gonna give myself five, and if I hit that pin this time, I'm gonna give myself 20, because it is a little bit of a harder shot, um, this one, than the chip. So, make sure your assessment, um, you, make sure your assessment works for whatever you are doing. And like I said, I have the assessment that I use for the short game um, below, it's in the hyperlink. So let's set up to the ball one more time. We're setting up. We're going to keep our uh, shaft vertical or, uh, in the middle of our stance. We're going to play the ball in the middle of our stance. We don't need to hunch this forward this time. Nice and gentle. Okay, nice narrow stance. Uh, make sure that you are going to use the hinge in your swing. Okay, and as always, take a couple practice swings. Okay, just nice back make sure you are finishing with that club face high in the air above your hands okay and that will promote your uh, your trajectory to go rather high went just over actually not too bad, landed in the blue, and I'll take that. I'll take my five points and walk away from that. Now, did I get as close as I did on the pitch and run? No, um, I did manage to get it in the blue, so my assessment is still pretty much the same. I did fly over top of the, um, over top of the driver out there, did land in the blue. Um, my putt, if I look at it from here, thinking about it's about an eight foot putt, so not as close as my chip and run. One thing we do want to let you know is when you uh, use this, when you do use a pitch shot instead of a chip and run, um, it's more of an advanced skill, okay? Um, a pitch and uh, a chip, a beginner should try to chip and run as much as possible, okay? Make life easy on yourself, get the lowest score you can, um, and make, make your life easy. You know, chip and run onto the green, let that ball kind of find its way up there. Um, it's just a long putt with a, with a different kind of, with a different club. Make your, make your life a little bit easier. This has a lot more variables that you have to worry about, how far you gotta fly it, how much spin is on the ball. Um, a lot more kind of things that you gotta remember in your technique. Um, you gotta try to hinge that ball up. So chip and run as much as you can if you are a beginner. If you're more advanced and you're gonna play, start playing in some competitions, then you can absolutely start working on your pitch and try to do uh, all the fundamentals that we just talked about. Okay, thanks for watching part five. Now, before talking about the six parts of putting, we want to kind of mention um, a grip and a stance that you're gonna be able to use um, for your grip, okay? What we're gonna do is teach you the uh, reverse overhand grip. So, if my putter is down, my right hand is going to be on my lower hand, my left hand will be a little bit higher. 
um, what kind of happens is as we grip this club, it doesn't look like a lot of it is happening right now, but if I pick this club up and show you the back side, this pointer finger on my left hand, because I'm a right handed putter, is going to overlap, just kind of come over the top of either my ring finger and sit in between my ring and middle finger, or it can sit in between your pinky and ring finger. Um, and as I putt, it's a lot like, it, feel, it has a nice feel because it's a lot like my swing and my hand placement is close to the same thing. So as I putt, I can really control the speed um, as well as strike on the ball. Another way to kind of go about it that is becoming more and more popular is to have your left hand a little bit lower and your right hand has an overlap to it on the other side. So just switching, I call it left hand low, where this is going to kind of stabilize your putt a little bit better um, and it's not going to be as flingy in the wrist. So also a way to go. Another one, and this is also becoming a little bit more popular. We see more and more people uh, use it. <coughs> and that is called the claw kind of grip, where I'm a right handed player. I place the left hand on my club, and I'm almost going to hold this like a pencil. Okay, just kind of knuckle these two fingers up on the back side. It can wrap around, it can be on the back, whatever kind of feels you know, natural and comfortable for you. And as you putt, right, you are able to take another stroke. Right, so just play with it, whatever kind of comes natural. There's plenty of other grips. If you look on tour, everyone's holding it different, everybody's different, you know, feels. Um, find something that works for you. The best, the easiest way to say what kind of grip is the best um, is to, you know, line up 100 putts on a hole, three foot, six foot, um, nine foot, and see which one you can make the most out of. Can you do it? Reverse overhand grip, um, over left grip, can you make more left hand low? or can you make the most left hand claw. Um, it does take some time, but then you know which stroke is your, your best guy. All right, guys, um, before we get a little too far into putting, um, we want to talk about your putting process first. Um, we, we gave you the grips and those kind of things to worry about. Now, um, we want to have your head right when you're walking up um, and you're trying to be over that ball and trying to sink that putt. So, as you are pro approaching the green, um, a couple things to think about is, you know, don't just kind of go up there nonchalantly. Um, have a plan of action once you get onto the green. Um, you're going to want to know where the high point of the green is, where the low point of the green is. Look at uh, the overall terrain of, you know, the hole, the course. Um, have an idea of where your ball is going to kind of go. So, um, I'm actually going to take you into a video um, on course, and we're going to talk about trying to find the straight uphill putt. The straight uphill putt is going to be at six, okay? So from a three foot putt, these are all, all these balls are from three feet, okay, in this circle. I know it's a little hard to see. We don't have any color coming out of this printer right now, but um, hopefully it's not too bad um, that you can still see it. So this six o'clock putt is going to be a straight uphill putt. And that's really nice. It gives you, at least if you can hit a straight putt, you have a good chance, uh, as long as you measure the distance, right, of making it. Um, if we go to five and if we go to seven, let's look at five first. Um, it says from a distance of three feet uh, that this ball is going to break uh, right to left. How do I know that? First off, okay, direction of the slope. This slope, okay, is actually running this way. It's going down the page. So I'll try to go with my pen. It's going down the page right here. So this this 12 o'clock putt is actually a downhill putt. This six o'clock putt is an uphill putt. If you can find this putt, okay, even this if this is not where your ball is, it's gonna make this putt and this putt and this putt and this putt. It's just gonna make it a lot more easier. The reason is I know which way this ball is going to break. If it is on the right side of the six o'clock, okay, it has to break from right to left, okay? Now, depending on slope, depending on how far away you are is gonna change. From three feet, ideally, it's gonna be around two inches, okay? So, you can kind of see the dotted line, that's where your ball is gonna travel. This aim should actually be on the right side of the cup, okay? So you're actually aiming about right here. We put a line on the ball, and we position ourselves off of that line, 
Um, at least that's how I do it. That's what I believe that works best for me. And that if I hit that ball and it rolls end over end, it will go into that cup. Um, so dotted line is your ball path. And then the target line is that little dark mark. If it is on the left side, okay, so the seven o'clock putt it is going to be again, um, a breaker, just a little bit, two inches. So this one is going to break left to right. Dotted line is the ball path. The dark line is the target line. What you really got to be careful about are the, um, is the three, okay, where this three ball is and where the nine is over here. Um, these are going to be your big breakers. These are your, you know, monster breakers. So especially if you start getting um, not within three and six feet of the hole, they're going to break a lot. So you really got to be careful. Um, so target line, once again, it's going to break from left to right. And then we're going to have the three. It's going to break from right to left. Up here, okay, this whole upper section, you really got to be careful. And you got to try to, um, what I try to do is try to leave your ball at the bottom part. Always try to have an uphill putt. Because if you have just a little touch and that slope is going to take your ball, it might not stop for a while. So um, try, it's super hard to try to get this ball to be on this side of the cup, but we try to prevent three and four putts um, as we are playing. We don't want to three and four putt it. Um, one and two putts, putts ideally. Uh, you know, ideally we want to get up and downs on the green and in the hole and get out and get off. Um, but it's not always, you know, not always uh, super easy. So right here, okay, 12, it's a straight putt, but you got to be careful. Okay, you don't want that ball to run past that hole too much. So distance control is, you know, really um, a key on the downhill putts. You know, one and eleven are going to be breakers again. Um, you know, just use caution because you don't want that ball run, running away from you. Um, play safe. You know, play play to put the ball in the hole, but make sure that if it misses, it's not going to roll all the way down to you know, um, all the way down the hill or whatever you're playing at. Uh, twos and twos and tens are going to break, and then it, once again, nines and threes are going to break. So we know that this is going to be a right to left uh, breaking putt, and we know that this is going to be a left to right breaking putt on this side. Um, just be careful with the top sections. Try to get that ball on this side. If not, you're just going to try to have to, you know, do the best you can with the downhill. But if you find this putt, and we do talk about it, if you find this putt, you'll be set, all right? You'll at least know which way the break is going to go. So this is how angles affect uh, the break, and this is how curves, slope, all that stuff is going to put some impact on your ball. And, you know, the more you practice, the more you're going to be better at it, okay? Hopefully this helps you, and we will show you on course um, how this kind of looks. All right, guys, here we have lined up a little bit of a putting process for you. Um, we were on the green. This is going to talk about slope and how the curve affects your ball. So I put lines on my ball, okay? That means if I hit that and that line goes end over end, that is going to be a good putt. I didn't push it or pull it. Now, I always try to find the uphill straight putt. Right now, I'm at the uphill straight putt. If I tap this ball um, and hit it with the right speed, it should go into the hole. So I'm actually aiming with this ball. My aim would be right here, okay? So if I walk it back, it, my tee is behind the flagstick. If I walk over to this ball, this time, okay, this is not going to be a straight putt, okay? This, that would be 6 o'clock over there. This one would be about 3 o'clock. I know that ball is going to roll from uh, right to left. So I actually want to aim a little bit off. This isn't a hard putt, so not a far putt. So I want to make sure, though, that my target is to the right of that cup. So I'm going to set my ball up so that it is to the right and then give it a putt. So curve would actually be a little bit starting here and then rolling this way. That ball over there is just a nice straight putt. And we'll show you real fast. Little bit of 
space to put back on the ball. The ball is actually going to be a little bit forward in my stance. So here's my stern, here's the midline, right? And line, and up the midline. I'm going to actually let it be just a smidge over that midline. Okay, so it's a little forward in my stance. Um, I use the I just use the basic overhead grip, um, and it works for me. My speed control and my game, it, it's the best for me. Um, so that's what I use. Um, as I'm doing this, I'm lining my head up so that if I drop another ball from my left eye, it would land on that ball. So I want to be, um, be able to see a straight line as I'm up here. Okay. Um, so nice stance, balance stance, 50-50. Um, you can place your hands a little bit forward. I'm going to let you know right now I don't like to do that, but you, a lot of people will place their hands a little bit forward as they take their stroke. For me, it throws it off. Um, maybe if I use another grip, I could do that, but I really don't like to. Um, so, nice stance and putt away. So now it's time for our six-part putting process. Okay, For this drill that I started, okay, when I'm working on the process, what I'm going to do first is I have my club with me. Okay? I put this next to either the bolt, you can put it next to it if you're on a golf course, or if you're just kind of doing some bird practice if you are a teacher, um, or even if you're a student and you just find some free space at home or on your carpet, this drill is going to help you out at least with the uh, process of putting. So I put the, the club down, and what I'm going to do is then I'm going to place my ball. Okay? And now, my ball has a little bit special thing to it, okay? So, I actually put a line on the ball. The reason is because when I putt, this is actually gonna be step six. I'm kind of skipping steps on you, but this line tells me how good of a putt I just made whenever it's rolling towards a hole. If that ball rolls and it's end over end, I know that that was a good putt, okay? If it has a wobble to it, then I know it was not a very good putt, okay? So, what I wanna do is line that ball up to the hole, okay? Make sure that that is facing the hole, and all I wanna focus on is hitting a straight putt. Um, I'm gonna work through the process with you. If you wanna make this drill harder, there's a couple ways to do it. Number one, okay, you can uh, move that club back. I'm actually going to because I'm gonna putt from six feet, not three. Uh, just because I wanna show you, um, the roll on this. And I think if you are a beginner, I think it's a good idea to start from six. Reason being because you can see this ball a little bit better roll. Now you might miss some more pots. And that's okay. All right. Um, but you want to see if you are pushing or pulling the ball. So let me go through the process with you. We have talked about step one and step two when we were on the, uh, when we were on the course on the green and we kind of surveyed the course. We do want to find that uh, nice flat uphill putt with zero break, all right? If you find that, you're golden, okay? Because you know which way that ball is gonna break off of that. So let's go through it. Actually, like I said, I'm gonna move my putt back just a little bit. Now if you can mess that, that's okay. There you go, like that. And I'm going to line the ball up right there, take my putt up. That line looks pretty good. I'm actually gonna take another step back. Six becomes when that ball starts rolling towards a hole. Is I know that um, 
if I hit it with a straight shot or a pull or a push. Okay, so from the process going through is already done. Just a couple of practices. Step four is get set. Step five is go. And step six is to read. When that ball went end over end, hits my target. If I was out of course, it would have gone on the pole. And I'm able to kind of see. Okay, if I push it, hold it, or hit a straight shot. Now, how the couple other balls went through, I'm just trying not to repeat the process. You don't want to just drop them, especially if you are using the line. Um, you want to kind of remember to line the ball up at the time. Okay, and then again, start from back here. Looks pretty straight. And then just repeat the process. Um, if you are out by yourself, you can, like we said, drop a few balls around the green. Assessment. There is a putting assessment that you can use, um, and I will add that in the link below. Make sure you check that out so you can assess um, if you're getting better and how much you're improving and where you still need to make improvements up. All right, well, thank you for watching putting, and um, we'll see you soon. All right, guys, so we have finished the round. Um, here are the scores as they go, hole by hole. Now, let's talk about a couple of things. First off, on a scorecard, okay, it's going to tell you how long um, each of the little tees from those tee boxes are, okay? So each is going to tell you a certain distance. The further back you are, the further it's going to be. This is a par three. Usually the colors are um, red, white, blue, and black. But for today, they just play with yellow and black, okay? So this is a little bit of the shorter course, and then this is a little bit of the longer course as they mark it. Remember, this is a par three. This is good for beginners, okay? Um, you put the players who are competing right here. And as you kind of go, okay, just remember to keep your score in the box. At the end of the round, you're going to add them up, okay? So I had... Um, I personally shot 30. The person I was playing with shot 46. Um, par is 27. Shooting par means um, that's what they would like you to be able to score. Okay, it's extremely difficult to get this number. Okay, not a lot of people can get 27. Okay, and at this course, I have never got it myself. Um, so I will add a, how you get your handicap um, in the link below. Um, that is something you can look up and. Um, keep your scores, okay, as you play different rounds, um, it'll ask you, you know, the course, the slope rating, those kind of things. Um, just kind of pay attention to that. It will say on the card, um, and then also on the back, it'll, it'll tell you all the information on the card that you need. So there's more to it than just that little side. But for scoring, this is a nice way to play. This is stroke play. This is how I would personally start out. If you want to play match play, Match play would be um, just one hole at a time and then just getting a point if you win the hole. So if you look right here, I got a four, my partner has a five, so I would get plus one. Um, moving to the next hole, um, I, I shot another four, she shot a six. <clears throat> so I would get another plus one, I'm winning by two. And that's how match play kind of is. This right here that's on the card is stroke play, so a little bit different. Um, but this should get you started. Make sure you pick up a scorecard. There will be rules to follow. Um, and other than that, you guys should be good. Remember, um, this is for beginners, so you know, just go out and play. Have some fun. Score doesn't matter. Uh, just try to you know end up having a good time. Try to get the ball in the hole um, and enjoy yourself out there. Good.